Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing U.S. immigration forms, specifically the complexity thereof and how that can have an overall impact on case processing. Uh, in a recent article that came from, well, I should say blog posting that came from thinkimmigration.org, it's titled USCIS acknowledges that its own policies compound case processing delays. This was posted by Jason Boyd. Um, those who are interested in this should go ahead and check out this blog directly. There's a lot of information in this, and although I made a couple of videos where we cite some things in this, there's quite a bit more, frankly, and it really provides some insight into the forest as well as the trees, if you will, with respect to these topics. But basically, to paraphrase certain aspects of this, they went ahead and a certain number of congressional representatives basically petitioned the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, they sent a letter, I should say, and demanded you know, some insight into why there's been a growing number of delays associated with immigration processing. Now, there's quite a bit going on here. I've done some other videos, as I said, on this topic. So you can look around the time that this video is being posted. You'll see other videos sort of contemporaneously with it, talking about other aspects of this overall phenomenon. And then there's a lot more in this blog that goes into greater depth that's not quite so, well, it's as specific, if not a little bit more so than I might be in this video, but there's other topics as well. Again, the forest and the trees. One thing that I thought was really interesting in here and something that I've seen as, as a sort of delaying, for lack of a better term, uh, sort of a, a factor in delaying certain cases that are going through the immigration process has been forms and the complexity thereof, and moreover, the changing of various forms. But let me quote directly from this article, the administration has cited a number of policies and practices associated with declining completion rates. And this blog goes into great detail about how they analyze completion rates, the factors that go into creating numbers for completion rates of these cases. I'm not gonna go into that at all. I urge those who are interested in this stuff, check out this blog, it's very good. In April, 2018, it identified among other things the quote unquote increasing complexity and length of forms. An August 2017 comparison by David Beer of the Cato Institute shows the widespread expansion in USCIS form length. So that's true. We've seen various forms associated with family immigration, especially, be increased in length. In fact, we've seen forms changed as well. And I would argue that the changing of forms, the periodic changing of forms, also has an overall impact on delayed processing, most notably because some people aren't aware of the change in forms. That being said, yes, USCIS does go out of their way to announce it, but if you're not sort of, if you don't sort of have your finger on the pulse of immigration, it can be a little bit difficult to ascertain when and if those forms have been changed. So various lay people that go ahead and apply for some of these visa categories might not be aware of that, and as a result, they may file an out-of-date form which will result in a rejection and probably a refiling. And I'm sure that those kinds of circumstances are then tabulated toward processing delays, or at least I would argue they should be. So the thing to keep in mind with respect to this overall process and the delays that may be becoming a rather new normal, if you will, with respect to how we deal with U.S. immigration, the thing to keep in mind is understanding the forms which need to be filed understanding what exactly they're asking for in these forms, keeping abreast of how the forms expand. I find it interesting that whereas once the I-130 was a relatively short form petition, it's now quite, quite long in terms of actual page numbers of the actual forms. And there's also additional petition forms associated with something akin to the K3, CR1 or IR1 visa petition. And for that reason, you know, things are changing and processing delays are occurring. How this is going to play out in the future remains to be seen, but I think it's, I think it's safe to say it's not particularly reasonable to expect that these processing delays are going to decrease anytime soon. In fact, I think we're going to have to either deal with them being what they are for now or more likely probably increase processing delays as time progresses.